Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Micron Technology stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios, so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Micron Technology is a producer of computer memory and data storage. The company is headquartered in Boise, Idaho, and was founded in 1978. It went public in 1985 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. Micron also develops dynamic random access memory, flash memory, and USB flash drives. Its consumer products are marketed under the brands Crucial and Ballistics. Micron and Intel created IM Flash Technologies, which produces NAND flash memory. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 99 billion market cap. They're trading at $88 a share and they have 1.1 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company had a lot of free cash flow in 2018. It did drop in 2019 and dropped a lot in 2020. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also dropping a lot from 14 billion down to 2.3 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that went from 30 billion all the way down to 20 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Example, our cost of labor and cost of materials. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And their gross profit has been going down a lot. It was 18 billion, it's down to 5.6 billion. Then below that is operating expenses. Examples are depreciation, marketing, and insurance. Below that is operating income. That's also been dropping a lot as well. Below that is the interest they receive on their investments minus the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or other non-operational gains and losses. Then below that is pre-tax income, then their taxes. Then you have earnings from equity interest. When a company has significant influence over another company, usually that means it owns between 20% and 50% of their stock. It has to report earnings from equity interest on its income statement. These are just Micron's earnings or losses from the companies it is invested in. Then the bottom line of their income statement is their net income. And that's been dropping a lot from 14 billion down to 2 billion. The main reason it's dropping is due to lower revenue. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. When the company buys an expensive piece of equipment to make its semiconductors, the cost of that equipment goes into CapEx the year they purchased it. And the equipment sits on their balance sheet and is depreciated over time. Depreciation is used to spread the cost of an asset onto the income statement over many years. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you a free cash flow. And you can see the company didn't have much free cash flow in 2020 and a trailing 12 months. They did have a ton in 2018 and a decent amount in 2019. So in 2018, they had a lot of free cash flow and they don't pay a dividend. So it looks like they paid down a lot of debt that year with their free cash flow. In 2019, it looks like they used their free cash flow to buy back stock. They bought back 2.7 billion. When a company buys back stock, this decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. They also bought back a little stock in 2020, a quarter of a billion dollars. They did not generate much free cash flow in 2020, so it looks like they added some debt. They added $700 million of debt in 2020 and $1.5 billion in the trailing 12 months. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow, you don't have much of a business. 
And this company generates lots of operating cash flow. It was 17 billion in 2018, but they're currently generating $8 billion of operating cash flow. Most companies would love to have this much operating cash flow. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. And to calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income. Then we have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They pass through a $5.5 billion depreciation expense. That decreased their net income $5.5 billion, but it's a non-cash item, so we add it back here. They also had $300 million in stock-based compensation. There were other non-cash items that increased their net income $547 million. So we have to minus that out on a statement of cash flows. Even though the company reported a $2.3 billion profit, they actually generated over $8 billion of cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. $40 billion of equity, $7 billion of debt. They're 85% equity, 15% debt. But their net debt is $126 million. That means they could pay off pretty much all the debt with the cash on a balance sheet if they wanted to. Their WAC is 11.27%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $83 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $69 billion. We divide that by 1.1 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $62. They're trading at $88, so they're trading at a 43% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $50, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued, even more so than me. I did a video on this company back in July when the stock was trading at $50, and I valued the stock at $84. They're trading at $88, so I was really close. Simply, Wall Street valued the company at $174, so they were way off back then. This is the stock price the last five years, so you can see it's only gone up. It's done really well. It's at its peak right now at $91. The company has a beta of 1.25, so the stock moves a little more than a market. It's not too volatile. The stock has gone up 68% in the past 52 weeks, much better than the S&P 500, which went up 17% in the same time frame. The 52-week low was 31, the high was 93 and the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. About 18 million shares are traded each day, and of the 1.1 billion shares outstanding, all of them are on float. 84% are held by institutions, and less than 2% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have done really well at almost $80,000. That's an annual return of 23%. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard at 8%, then BlackRock, then PrimeCap, State Street, and FMR. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 9, the median is 14. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share to calculate earnings per share. That's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 42.8, so investors are paying $43 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 4.9 which is between the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're 2.5. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have 40 billion of equity, 38 billion of tangible equity, since they have 1.5 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. The only way a company gets intangible assets on its balance sheet, it's when they acquire another company for more than its net assets, or if they merge with another company. You cannot internally generate intangible assets and put it into your balance sheet. Interest coverage ratios EBIT over interest expense. They can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They have a low ROE at 6%. Current ratios current assets over current liabilities. They have a lot of current assets on their balance sheet. They have current assets of $7 billion of cash, 4 billion of receivables and 5.5 billion of inventory. So the company is well capitalized even though it had a small amount of free cash flow because it has almost 11 billion dollars of working capital. 
Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities, and they don't pay a dividend. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 10 companies in the same industry as Micron, and if Micron has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because their net income has come down so much. They're doing well in price to sales and price to book. They have a high current ratio. They're really low in ROE, one of the worst on the list. They are doing better than average or market cap at 15%, average is 24%. And this industry has some really big companies, NVIDIA, Taiwan Semiconductor, Texas Instruments, and Intel. So they are small and average. And a lot of companies in this industry pay a dividend, they do not. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 43% premium, but this is a really solid company. But I wouldn't be surprised in 2022 if sales were back to $30 billion or possibly higher. I ranked their free cash flows 3 out of 10 because they've been going down a lot. I ranked their revenue 2 out of 10. That's been struggling. And I ranked their ratios 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.